Hello, I'm Logan Crawford, and welcome to the NFT Studio 24 podcast interview. NFT Studio 24 is a global media platform dedicated to empowering the emerging world of decentralization, blockchain, metaverse, NFT, and crypto by reporting on the latest and most authentic news. We interview various figures to highlight their expertise and contributions to the industry in hopes of conveying the right message to our global audience. On today's episode, we are interviewing Sandy Carter, Senior Vice President at Unstoppable. Sandy Carter is a well-known, best-selling author, speaker, and entrepreneur, widely recognized as one of the most influential women in the Web3 world. She has always been a driving force for digital business innovation. Sandy worked for innovation at IBM for almost a decade and was also Senior Vice President at Amazon. Sandy has been listed in Forbes 2016 Digital Influencers, Analytica's top 100 influencer for both cloud and IoT, and a top channel chief by CRN Magazine. At Unstoppable, she is helping the Web3 community by sharing her expertise. Sandy, thank you so much for joining us here today on NFT Studio 24. We really appreciate your time. Well, thank you, Logan. It's such an honor to be here. It, the honor is all ours, trust me. Now, quick question. Let's let the audience know all about you. Give us a quick introduction. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your unstoppable domains. Yes, well, thanks again, Logan. My name is Sandy Carter, and I'm currently SVP at Unstoppable Domains. Uh, Unstoppable Domains just became a unicorn, which means we did a, a fundraise of valuation over a billion dollars. And what we focus in on are Web3 domains, which are domains with superpowers. It's a digital identity that travels with you throughout the metaverse. Anywhere you go, you take that digital identity with you. Uh, we were just named one of Forbes' top in 2022 startups in the United States. And uh, yeah, we're very excited to be here really shaping the future of Web3. Exciting news. Now you were working for more of a traditional company. You were working with Amazon, the top tech company in the world. What influenced you to leave Amazon and join Web3? Yeah, Amazon, I was working for Amazon Web Services, and you are right, it is a top technical company in the world. In fact, I would say the top technical company in the world, a great company to work for and to learn. Um, as I was there the last year, I was working with a lot of different customers and partners, and they started exploring a lot of new tech. So AR or augmented reality, virtual reality, um, artificial intelligence, and blockchain. And so as I started going down the rabbit hole, especially around blockchain, I found so many use cases and the power of the tech. Uh, given that and the combo of virtual reality, augmented reality, AI, and blockchain for the metaverse, I started thinking, wow, I really want to do this, not just as kind of a set of side projects, but more for helping businesses as we create the next generation of the internet. And Logan, that really is what Web3 is, it's the next generation of the internet. Uh, it's really focused on that three-dimensional viewpoint as well as decentralization and ownership of your own digital identity. So um, after I discovered that, I was all in on coming over to a great startup. And like I said, we just became a unicorn. Wonderful, congratulations on that. And it must be very exciting to be basically inventing this next generation of the internet. I mean, Amazon was obviously influential and critical to creating Web 2, but now you're at the ground floor and building of Web 3. It's absolutely true. You know, um, right now, I like to say we're in the dial-up phase of Web 3. Now is when all of the really exciting stuff is happening. We're shaping, you know, the technologies which will be used as the center stage for decades to come. We're shaping user interfaces and protocols, how that will be done. We're shaping the community that will be formed and what that community will look like and stand for. And so for me, it's a very exciting time in the space as we move forward. So, you know, if you really think about it, um, as you're looking at new tech, this is, you know, maybe once in a lifetime, right? Reshaping what the internet is, what it will stand for. And um, in particular, to me, 
you know, will data be owned by us, the user? That's what Web3 is all about is ownership. Will data be used by us, the user? Or, you know, will it continue to be owned by, you know, entities, governments, and, and companies? And for me, that's a really big question. It's a big question for all of us, particularly when it comes to privacy concerns. You're a pioneer, first in Web 2, now Web 3. What drew your attention when it came to this new groundbreaking innovation and technology? So I think for me, it was ownership. You know, when people ask me, Logan, really quickly, what's the difference between Web 2 and Web 3? It is about ownership. So let's think about how we do business today. Um, you and I, we go and we log into, let's say Google, we use a username and password. Maybe we log into Instagram, maybe to Twitter. And each of those logins, we're using a different username and a different password. And by the way, the data that is accumulated is owned by that company or that entity, right? And so I just read an article that said Google and Facebook make over a hundred billion dollars a year on selling that data to others. So now if you turn your attention to Web3, what happens in Web3 is you're using, I'm going to use Unstoppable Domains. You take that domain and you're using that domain to log into everything across Web3. So any decentralized application, let's take decentralized finance, like Cook Finance, you use Sandy.nft and I log in. You go to a game, you're going to use Sandy.nft to log in. Um, now, let's say you're going to go over to a metaverse, Atlantic metaverse. You're going to use Sandy.nft. Um, I use that as an illustration because your, your digital domain actually travels with you because you own it. You own that domain. Um, and now let's talk about the data. So all of that data now stays with me. It's not being sold, but I get to decide who gets to see it, when they get to see it, and how much they get to see um, so as I'm signing into those apps, I decide, do I want to share my email? Do I want to share my address? Do I want to share that I have three badges or my social media status? I can choose to share that or not share that. And for me, that is significant. Uh, it's a game changer. And it's really the main reason I came over was to try to have an impact in that area known as digital identity. And it will certainly make things easier instead of having a login for every domain. And of course, there's hundreds and thousands of domains that we use over the course of a year. Now we'll have one ID on the Web3 that will go with us. It sounds like a fantastic new frontier that you're opening up there, Sandy. Now, you've kind of addressed this. You've worked for IBM. You've worked for Amazon. Tell us what makes unstoppable domains different from these two tech giants. And I guess it's old technology versus this new technology, right? And as far as ownership goes of uh, your data. Yeah, I mean, that would be the main difference that I would see today. I mean, of course, IBM and AWS are big innovators in the space, and they're going to continue to make inroads into cloud and into quantum for sure. Uh, but I think the Web3 space right now, mostly startups are in the space. And if you remember, the last bear market was when Amazon was born. And I think this bear market, we're going to have the next you know, big impact, the next big disruption, which I think will be here. And so I wanted to go and play a role um, at a startup where I could have a significant impact on that next generation of the web. And it's also exciting to have someone like you with your credentials and your background working with Unstoppable, which differentiates it from the field right now, because you've got a lot of Johnny come lately's and a lot of fly by nights that aren't going to be here in a year or two or five years, it seems, right? I completely agree. Yes, you know, um, as I said, we just got our funding. We're innovating during the spare market. We've increased our partnerships significantly. And, you know, partnerships in the space are really important because that's what gives you the capability to log in. I think we have a very strong product market fit as well. Um, not only for, you know, um, this view of being able to sign in with one particular digital identity. But also if you think about today in the crypto space, most people have to sign in with a big long set of letters and numbers. And now you can just sign in with logan.nft or sandy.nft and really have that impact. So I really believe that Unstoppable is here for the long term. And I think is here with not just a focus on helping customers, but with a purpose overall for all of us as users.
Tell us a little bit about the difference between ends.eth and unstoppable domains. Yeah, well, we we see the market as, as huge. So obviously there's space for both of us. There are a couple of differences. Um, if you think about uh, unstoppable domains, we believe in ownership, which is that core characteristic of Web3. So when you buy a Sandy.nft, your own domain, you own it. You don't rent it. You don't subscribe to it. You own that domain. Um, also, we believe in, in the climate and what's happening around us. So there is zero gas fee. And what does zero gas fee mean? Well, you pay a gas fee when you're using all these decentralized computers out there. And so zero gas fee means that we're based on Polygon, which is a layer two, which enables you to do this in the most client, climate neutral way that you possibly can. Um, and so those are two big differentiators in addition to all the different applications you can log into with Unstoppable. Compared to Web 2, Web 3 seems like it's very community closed between customers, partners, and the company itself. How do you see Web 3 in the next decade? Wow, I could make a million bucks, maybe a billion bucks if I knew that. But here's my, uh, here's my view. I see a lot of uh, value and power coming from digital identity. I think digital identity will be declared a human right. And I know that sounds broad and big, but I really believe that to be the case. Um, we see applications such as, um, you know, education, which is the ability for you to be able to store in your digital identity, your diploma and all your certifications to be able to share those skill sets as you go forward. But even broader than that, think about healthcare today, uh, Logan. Mm -hmm. I was just at NFT NYC and we met with a bunch of healthcare startups and they told me that 60% of misdiagnosis today is made because doctors don't have all the information about you. It's siloed today into different, you know, medical groups and, and different doctors. So they're working on storing inside of that digital identity, your healthcare data as an NFT. So imagine if you, Logan, got to share that information with your doctors, but you could share all of it, not just a piece of it, but all of it and increase the quality of healthcare. This is what I think the future of digital identity holds. I think it's really about hashtag tech for good, making life better, having data owned by the user and data that really matters and needs to be protected as we move forward. That's where I see the future going. It's interesting that you use uh, healthcare data as an example because healthcare data is generally protected by HIPAA rules. So if we do merge the two together, if our health data and our other data are merged together, then I would think all of it would be protected. But I think that's part of what you're working on there at Unstoppable right now. That's right, because you said 50 years out. So I'm imagining a new world. I think HIPAA is very good. I think all of your data today is protected or can be protected in Web3, but you are right. We have to pay particular attention to that healthcare data. Um, but, you know, today I was on um, with a partner and he was telling me that, you know, he went out there to search on a diagnosis he just got from his doctor. Mm -hmm. And when he searched on Google for some information about it, he said now he's getting ads and, you know, Facebook and Google and everybody's now sending him ads and products. So is your data really protected about healthcare or is it right? Exactly. This is where the this is where the decentralized web really comes into play, right? That ability to separate and segment who has access. And then if you own that data, like you owned your search and what you searched for, you wouldn't choose to, to share it with all these other companies. So I do think that there is a big and significant play to be made here. And it's not just healthcare. I use healthcare and education as two. Um, you could see applications in retail. Um, I mean, the, the whole, every industry possible could have impacts in the space. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's clear. Everybody who uses social media at all knows that if they Google uh, that they're looking for a stand-up paddleboard, then their Facebook feed for the next three days will be covered <laughs> with stand-up paddleboard ads. Yep. It's as simple as that. It's a little annoying, but it's part of life right now. But obviously, you're working to change that. And that's great. Now, you're also the founder of Unstoppable WOW 3. It empowers women in the Web3 community. Tell us a little bit about the group and what you're hoping to achieve. Yeah, so I founded on International Women's Day a group called Unstoppable Women of Web3. 
Um, and I found that it focused on companies because there's already a ton of groups out there that focus on women in Web3. This was really to focus on companies taking a stand for women in Web3. And part of the reason I founded it, Logan, is um, there was an article that was done on me in the New York Times when I moved from Amazon to Unstoppable. And we got 1,500 job applicants because of that article. Only 2% of them were women. And that was a big shocker to me. So I started doing research and I found that in this space and Web3 and Metaverse, only 8% of those in the space are women. And that just doesn't work, right? If you're going to innovate, you need diverse voices in the space. And so I started uh, Unstoppable Women of Web3 to get support from companies around the world to support education for women of Web3. And so we now have over 125 companies from uh, you know, folks that we know and love in the space like blockchain.com and OpenSea and Opera um, to even some Web2 companies who are looking to make the jump into Web3 like Google Cloud and Deloitte, for example. Um, and so this group for me is really powerful. It's an education focus, trying to get everybody to support getting those diverse voices. So we do have all that innovation coming in. You know, you and I earlier, Logan, talked about how this is really the dial-up phase. Well, if it is a dial-up phase, then we need all people inputting into what the future will look like, not just a small group. Uh, and so if there's any company out there that is interested in, in helping us with this charge, we would love to have you join our Unstoppable WOW 3 movement. Wonderful. Let's talk a little bit about competition. It seems to be increasing every day in the Web3 world. How does Unstoppable Domain maintain its authenticity in the uh, industry? Well, you know, if you think about it, uh, we believe the web space is, is very large. And for us, we keep partnering with many partners. Um, and so that what that allows us to do is to help out everyone in the Web3 space and the metaverse space. We focus in on, you know, gaming companies that are out there. We help focus in on brands who are out there, um, wallet companies, exchanges, um, and even metaverses that are out there today. So, you know, for us, it's really about how do we help add value to another company's, um, you know, uh, customer? How do we help add value? You know, it's very much of an Amazon Web Services play. Um, let's don't focus so much on the competitor. Let's focus on how we can add value to the customer. And if we can add value to the customer, then that is the right thing for the industry for us as a player in the industry and for our users. Wonderful, it's a great strategy. Take care of the customer, make sure they're fully satisfied and then you don't have to worry about the competition because then there is no competition in a way your customers will come back to you. Let's talk right. a little bit about your plans, long-term and short-term for Unstoppable. What new updates can we expect in the coming months for Unstoppable as well? Oh, wow. We've got so many new things happening. But if I told you, you'd have to be wearing orange. So let me tell you about a couple of things we've recently announced that I think are really cool. Um, we just recently announced a new mobile app. Now, mobile, we know, is really important. A lot of people do use their desktop, especially in the Web3 world and for the metaverse, right, because you need that power. But you can still do a lot on your mobile device. And so we just released a fabulous new launch of our mobile app. And what it does is it enables you now to manage and back up all that data that we just talked about. Um, you can now back all that data up and make sure that it's secure and protected. You can also do kind of cool user interface items like take an NFT and the mobile app will apply a QR code to it. And if you want to at a conference, instead of having business cards, you can use that NFT with your QR code on it and share your telegraph, your email, whatever information you wanna share. It's really kind of a nice feature or a nice function. Um, we've also just announced some other things that can help a lot of our partners as well, which enables them to uh, resolve domain names. So remember we talked about those long right. set of letters and numbers for crypto um, before you could resolve them one way. So going from the long name to sandy.nft, now you can take it from sandy.nft back to the long name if you need to. Uh, it's pretty essential, uh, you know, as you're, as you're moving forward. And we even have some more exciting things that are coming up like email. 
um, you know, using that domain name to um, get email out the door, both to forward and receive it. And it's really important because one of the things that a decentralized app helps you do is to protect the privacy of that email. So if I use that as a user, I can now input my email, still get newsletters from many companies, but that company actually doesn't have my email. It's hidden from them. So it's a really cool feature uh, that really enables you to protect that PII data that maybe you don't want having sent everywhere, but to still be able to get the right information. Um, I don't know about you, but you know, one day I ordered a t-shirt and I ended up getting like 17 emails for the rest of my life <laughs> because I had ordered that t-shirt. I would really have loved this feature where they couldn't have emailed me 17 times because I turned that, that piece of data off for them. Exactly. It's exciting stuff that you're talking about because it's the future, but it's not so distant of a future. These are all very practical um, aspects to the internet that we need in place pretty soon. And it sounds like you're already there, which is great. So it's the future, but it's a near future. And you're looking into the long distance future as well. Exciting times and unstoppable for sure. Let's do our little rapid fire questions now, if you would, Sandy, with me, okay? Okay, and let's do here, it. Here we go. So what are your predictions for Bitcoin prices in the year 2023? Uh, I think Bitcoin's going to go up in 2023. I think it's gone down. I think we now have hit the trough. I think it's going to go back up. What about the price of Ethereum after the merge? Ooh, the merge is coming up. What, September? It's supposed to be like September um, 15th or something. I do think there'll be a lot of speculation uh, as we move forward on that. I do think there are a lot of fallacies out there about, uh, about it as well. So um, for example, a lot of people believe the merge will reduce gas fees. It won't. Um, and so, you know, if you really think about it, there's a lot of things that the merge will bring us, but there's a lot of things that they won't. However, even despite those misconceptions, I do feel like it will be a strong foundation if it happens on the 15th or 16th as well. Sounds great. Top three crypto coins in your wallet and why? Oh, wow. Let's see. I have mostly um, consolidated into uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I don't really know if I even have a third, maybe Solarian, maybe I still have those. And why? Because I believe in what they stand for and where they're headed um, as we're moving forward. What will Web3 look like by the year 2030? I don't think people will be saying the term Web3 by 2030. I think it'll be a natural part of the internet and it'll be 3D enabled and so much cooler than it is today. What do you think crypto prices will continue to rise this year? Um, this year, I think they're probably going to stay flat or stable. I think the rise will come in 2023. Your favorite NFT collections and why? It kind of addressed this, but we'll ask you once again. Well, NFT collections, I, I love BFF. That's block chain friends forever. Uh, it is a female NFT collection and I like it because of what they stand for and what they're doing to educate individual women. I love Lazy Lions. First of all, just because they're fun, they have a great community and I, I really like participating in what they, you know, what they have today and what they're standing for. And I like um, pudgy penguins too. I think pudgy penguins are cool and they just released like the little pudgies, which I think are, are so super cute. <laughs> they are super cute indeed. Okay, finally, we don't wanna hold you up all day. Let's just get to our last big question. You're an inspiring influencer in the Web3 space. What message would you like to give our NFT Studio 24 viewers, Web3 developers, stakeholders, and aspiring NFT artists? Um, I would say that the future is now, the future is diverse, and everybody should grab that digital identity now. Exactly. Yeah, I'm very lucky. I have Logan Crawford at Gmail. I have Logan Crawford domain.com, and I'm going to get a Logan Crawford at Unstoppable for sure. Sandy awesome. Carter. That's Sandy Carter, thank you so much for joining us here today on NFT Studio 24. Thank you for having me. And to the folks at home, be sure to leave a like, a comment, and to subscribe for more exclusive content. I'm Logan Crawford. Until next time.